Well, here's something that we have um, talked about in the past, and uh, we, we need to talk about again, and that is the, the forced labor of children in pursuit of this Green New Deal. It's no deal at all for kids in Africa or Afghanistan or elsewhere that are forced into artesian mining, they call it. Sounds so nice, doesn't it? You probably bought artesian bread in your life. Sounds nice. It's handmade. What it means is they have no tools. And so they're digging in the dirt with their fingers until they're bloody to make a dollar or two a day just to get enough food to survive one more day to come back and do it all over again. Jason Jones, the president of the Human Rights Education and Relief Organization, Hero, author of his new book, The Great Campaign Against the Great Reset. Join me now. Jason, good to have you here. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Artesian mining. How lovely. Sounds so wonderful, except what it means is children are exploited to the point of having bloody fingers. They're filthy. The conditions are awful. It's it's about the worst possible thing for the environment, not just the kids, but for the environment. It is a it is a green disaster from start to finish are these EVs in so many places. Where would you like to start? Well, Steve, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Everything about the electric vehicle, the green vehicle, which I call it the black and brown vehicle. It's black coal that's generating the electricity and it's brown children in Congo. It's it's uh, the families in South America for the lithium that are seeing uh, their water, their rivers, their lakes, and their streams destroyed. And of course, the worst part is this cobalt mining, this artesian mining with children with spoons and cups and shovels digging for cobalt, which is highly toxic, you know, cancer causing and this past Christmas, King Charles, in his Christmas address, said that, you know, despite all of the famines and wars and political unrest in the world, we shouldn't allow all of this war and famine and disease and violence to distract us from what we should be really focused on is having compassion for the climate. Well, of course, by compassion from the climate, it means you don't keep your eye off the ball. This is all about um, funneling money into this EV industry, which is devastating to the environment. It's a human rights catastrophe. And if the electric, I mean, if the internal combustion engine was invented today, it would be hailed as a great environmental savior. Um, Absolutely true, that, as it should be. I mean, you look at, at tailpipe emissions, by the way, that the Biden the administration going after diesel and gasoline vehicles, not because of tailpipe emissions. They say that. But the truth of the matter is this. We've learned in new studies recently, Jason, and you can weigh in on this. Because of the incredible weight of electric vehicles, their their brake pads, their tires, the destruction to the road create far more pollution and particulate than do tailpipes in America that have been getting cleaner and cleaner year after year after year. And here's what I don't understand, because uh, we were, were traveling and we were in a a hybrid Toyota van here a couple of days ago with an Uber driver. He's the greatest thing ever. It gets better than 40 miles to the gallon. When do you have to recharge it? Oh, I don't. It charges itself because it internally charges. So this hybrid vehicle, okay, maybe not too bad of an idea. The batteries are far smaller. Uh, you still use diesel or gasoline. It works well. It clean it. Why this push for EV only? What, what, is the, what is the game here is what I'm asking. Well, well, we know it's not, Stephen. It's really with this whole Great Reset, everything involved with this Great Reset, it's hard to wrap your mind around what their goals are because they appear to be anti-human goals. It has nothing to do with the environment or the climate. As you said, the most dangerous thing on the road uh, for emissions is really the electric vehicle because of their tires. And this is we're talking about what's toxic to human beings. What's coming out of your tailpipe is plant food. So it's it's... You know, Steve, to, to Yeah, to CO2 gas. is the gas of life, Jason. That, that's, that's what it was <laughs> always called from the time I was in first grade. CO2 is the gas of life because CO2, the more of it that's in the environment, the more things that flourish and grow. You know, they talk about how the Amazon uh, rainforest is being deforested. No, it's not. It's overgrowing. It, it's growing. It's exploding because there's a little bit more CO2 in the atmosphere now than there was 50 years ago. So things are exploding. Green is good. And it's growing, and the CO2 is, is not some poison. It's, it's the gas of life that makes the world go round. Where am I wrong? No, and you know, you're, you're right. And you know, it's also the energy of life of the poorest people in the world is coal. You had just had COP28 um, this past uh, spring, and this uh, COP29 is coming up in November. And Azerbaijan, which just ethnically cleansed Artsakh of Christians that have lived there since the first century, um, 
is has been put in charge of COP29 to help us have our climate and energy goals. My organization, the Vulnerable People Project, Steve, you can Google this. It's it's a fact. I have delivered more coal in three Christmases than Santa Claus has, has in 17th century, 16th century. That a boy. And what we do is we deliver coal, 100 million hours of, of heat. We've delivered through coal to the widows and orphans of our allies who were killed in Afghanistan to get them through the brutal winter uh, yeah. to families in other parts of Central Asia. My organization gets criticized as not being thoughtful of our posterity um, because I'm out there giving coal to people who would freeze to death without this little tin tray and this little lump of coal. Um, yeah. This is where we live. That This is I, where we live. Uh, you know, in, in, we, live. Uh, we need energy-dense products like coal, gasoline, diesel, nuclear is fine with me. We need energy-dense creations of energy. Uh, and anything short of that, first of all, it destroys America. America needs mass quantities of cheap energy to survive. They know that. That's why they're choking off our energy. And these smaller countries, like you say, need energy. China's building a brand-new coal-fired power plant every few days now, either in mainland China or somewhere around the world where their influence is. They're importing more coal now, and a lot of it coming from West Virginia and Wyoming, by the way. Newsflash, our coal is getting burned. Good coal that we have. Their crappy coal from Mongolia is also getting burned. Uh, Jason, tell the people real quickly where they can get a hold of you. I'd love to have you back anytime. Uh, well, thanks. Because there's more to talk about. Go ahead. Thanks, Steve. Our organization is the vulnerable people project.com. We stand with the vulnerable from, we have security guards outside of synagogues in Africa, churches across the world, uh, from the Philippines to Nigeria and girls schools in Afghanistan. We still run. So if you right. want to stand in some, with the most vulnerable people in the world, go to the uh, vulnerable people project.com. Jason Jones, greatly appreciate you being here. Good stuff is an important message. And, and greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, when we come back, sports with Brock. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Those burgers smell amazing. Mm. Speaking of amazing, our bar is powered, powered by, by natural, natural gas. gas. Yes. Because we're just two roommates in a commercial, letting everyone know Enbridge is working to reduce emissions by blending hydrogen and renewable natural gas into their network. It's what we were created to do, Michael. Deja, it's what we live for. And when this commercial ends... We say... Tomorrow, tomorrow is, is on. on. Enbridge. Life takes energy. As the weather gets colder, it's a good idea to layer up with scarves, hats, and mittens. Another layer of protection this season is to get your flu and COVID-19 vaccines. You can get both vaccines at the same time. Talk to your health care provider or learn more at michigan.gov slash COVID flu RSV and layer up for some added peace of mind. Sponsored by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and the Michigan Association of Broadcasters.